Hello, uh, thank you for the introduction. I'm really happy to be here. Uh, just a heads up, I'm very approachable. So if you ever want to ask me any questions, you can reach me on Twitter or LinkedIn or uh, via email. Okay, so let's start. Uh, I'm going to talk about the subject that fascinates me as a designer, as a game designer and the immersive technology designer, and that is audio AR. So here on the screen, uh, you see both frames pictured. This is the device that Bose unveiled uh, two years ago, uh, together with their audio AR first uh, immersive platform for developers. Uh, in my practice as a game designer, however, I fully recognize the potential of using these devices not only for audio first wearables, but also for uh, other virtual reality or mixed reality platforms. And I really like this quote from uh, Saul Rogers. Uh, he's a writer for Forbes. Uh, he says, uh, by placing audio in our surroundings, we are forcing to reconnect with the world around us, look up for our addictive screens and connect with each other in ways that augment our collective experience. That's a really inspiring quote. Uh, so what is audio AR and how it works? So on this image from uh, Bose website, uh, you can see that uh, the wearables have sensors that detect motion, uh, gyroscope and accelerometer. Uh, so they track approximate head rotation and direction. Uh, and also the wearables have access to various phone data, such as GPS uh, and other data. And that allows to enhance the opportunity to augment your world even further. Uh, so I'm going to talk a bit about my game, or is it like creative tool? Yeah, creative tool maybe called Bumblebee Jam. I had the opportunity to design this game for uh, both audio AR devices, and it's going to be a little postmortem about some of the design solutions and about some struggles and challenges that we met along the way. Uh, so this is Bumblebee Jam, uh, and this is the link. You can download it from App Store or Google Play. Uh, Uh, Mumble the Jam is an explorative choose-your-own-adventure musical app. Uh, technically, it's a simple music sequencer with novel mechanics and a little bit of narrative to establish the world and the controls. Uh, you play as a bee, uh, you layer song globs, and uh, the whole experience set in the garden, where every song, when the flowers are uh, sounds, and you are uh, pollinating the flowers uh, with the sounds. Uh, so without further ado, I recorded a short tutorial walkthrough. Uh, so here you see me wearing uh, both frames. And on the right side, you see what's happening on my phone screen. On the right, so I actually hear the audio through these little special uh, speakers. On the frames, uh, it's actually quite hard to put on video, but the sounds, it's, it's really good. It's like directed to your ears. I also mixed some of the street sounds in the mix, so you kind of like can approximate how I how I hear this whole experience, how I perceive it. Uh, okay, so the first one, the first uh, solution that we decided to invent, it's a very simple controls. So this is like a very new technology and people don't know how to use it. And it offers a lot of uh, actually very cool inputs, but we decided to keep it to the minimum. Let's see. So here is device connecting. A uh, little bit of disclaimer. I'm tapping anywhere to start. I'm selecting tutorial. Welcome to the garden, where the flowers here sing to each other. Help me carry their sounds so they can sing together. To start, face forward for a few seconds, then nod your head yes. So this is me nodding my head yes and starting the experience. So then the next step, we establish the interaction limits. Uh, it's not VR, you know, we can't track full uh, 6DOF and we can't track hands or wherever. So the only input is actually your head nodes here uh, and some other stuff. So we'll see. There are always three different flowers to choose from. Face forward and slowly look around, side to side and up. Nod your head in the direction of the flower that's making your favorite sound. Oh. 
So here you see I'm starting to perceive the audioscape around me and kind of understand where in space those sounds are located. And I'm able to choose uh, the sounds that I like the most just by noting. And the B uh, sound is a confirmation that I selected something. Of course, as with the any technology, there are some input lags and errors. It's not perfect, uh, but it's really important to design for it and consider any input lags and errors in your design. So we'll see. If you don't want to carry any of the sounds, you can always nod your head facing forward. So here you see it missed, it actually missed my nod. But nothing serious happens, so we don't like punish, we don't give in feedback even for that, because uh, we actually tested like the range of the like not input. And uh, yeah, you just have to like not uh, the second time. You have to make sure that nothing serious will happen. So the next one is the backup plan, uh, because it's really important to keep this like audioscape around you. And as with any technology, the it can drift over time. Uh, so we have to make sure that the player can recalibrate and recenter the experience at any time. And this is how we design for it. If you change your position, turn around, or feel lost, you may need to recalibrate your position in the game by double tapping on the side of your Bose AR device. Yeah, double tapping is really handy, and this feature is really cool when you, for example, uh, you know, just changing your body position and turning your hand from like this direction to this direction. Uh, so then we started to think about like how long do we want to make this experience? Should it be short or be long? We don't know. Uh, we didn't have time for extensive user research, so we don't know the tolerance. Uh, how users tolerate this new technology. So we just decided to let user uh, define the experience length. So basically you can play any song uh, in like infinite amount of times and every time it will be different and you can stop at any time and you can start another song or you can just quit. So we have four songs on our app uh, and every song has like quintillion variation. Uh, so you never are, it's not like a quest, it's not like you have to finish something. It's a very chill and uh, simple game or music sequencer. The music will go on as long as you like. Keep exploring and layering new sounds to discover new ways of making music. The old sounds will fade away. So even within one song, there are endless opportunities to explore and combine. Yeah, so the sounds are fading over time, and uh, so the screen just keeps track of your elastic sounds. Okay, so the last one, a very important pillar, pillar of design, is uh, giving agency to user. And let's see. ready, you can quit this tutorial and play any of the other songs without my help. So yeah, we taught the user how to how to like understand this design paradigm and then we're letting them go and play and you know decide for themselves and also we are leaving the opportunity to revisit the tutorial. It's very useful when they want to explain to their friends how it works. Uh, so this is our UI. Uh, so both were very specific about they want uh, it to be audio first. That means the screen shouldn't present any distractions. So users shouldn't like look at screen all the time. But also it's a very novel uh, wearables and no very novel design paradigm. So like some information should be present at least in the beginning of the experience. So we iterated a lot on the screens and this is our flow basically. Those, those are our selection screen on the left and the main screen in the middle. So this yellow uh, icon is for recentering. If for some reason you don't want to double tap, uh, you can always press info and we have credits and this little arrow means that you can go back to the main menu and select another song. Uh, UI went through many, many iterations. So that was the first version of it on the left. Uh, and this version was proven to be ineffective. Uh, because users felt like they have to like 
fill all uh, all six uh, squares or six areas, and it was like a quest for them. So they thought they should, you know, fill them with colors, but actually no. So we wanted them to pay attention to the sound, so not to the UI or the screen. So that's why we minimized absolutely everything, and we only uh, left an essential information that helps you to understand like the audioscape around you. So the music composition for the sub was really a big challenge. So it's very different from the, uh, you know, like your average music compositions. So our composers, Gordy Chorne and Shakar Mujukan, they're both game developers. So they know about interactivity and interactive music as well. So in this composition, basically every sample, every loop should be really compatible with other loops. Be like put together in any uh, sequence and still sound good and feel good. That was a big challenge, and uh, they used Logic and uh, Ableton uh, for uh, music composition and lay, laying it out. But uh, eventually, I would be thinking about using some real time music generation uh, or something like F mode when we can like experiment with the music before we put it into the game engine. Uh, so here are some audio air opportunities uh, that are really exciting. Uh, accessibility, of course, uh, virtual tours, uh, music creation, as you can see, is really fun. Uh, language learning, imagine if you can, like, not every time uh, to confirm that you pronounce something correctly. Uh, music education, of course, so you can train your pitch uh, fitness, inst fitness instruction. So these wearables actually, like if they fit well, frames or the headphones, uh, also the headphones I'm wearing now, are also wearables. Uh, they're really easy and cool and you can do fitness with them. Uh, it's really a wow factor for some marketing or experiment experiential activations. People just not, you know, get used to that headphones or uh, frames understand your like head movements and of course games and both have some games uh, in the store. But also, as I mentioned, I don't see audio AR as like, uh, you know, without visuals. Uh, it's a paradigm and you can use it for sure for any other virtual reality or mixed reality headsets. So here you can see Microsoft HoloLens, uh, Amazon Echo Frames, Unreal Glasses, uh, Focals by North and Magic Leap. They're all compatible with this design paradigm, and you can use this knowledge to design for these devices. Uh, and yes, it's not necessary to design visuals even because audio is such a rich medium, especially combined with sensors. So it's very creative. It's really cool to have some like design limitations. Uh, so just try it sometimes and you know, it's really cool and uh, it will make you a better designer if you try to create some audio only experience for AR, at least in my opinion. Uh, thank you very much for listening to me. Uh, as I said, I'm always open to any questions and you can actually ask some questions now. Thank you. Hi, Maria. Eamon here. Thank you very Hello. much. That was a great presentation. Thank you. All right. So we'll move on right to the questions. Um, most people seem to be wondering, what development platform did you use to create Bumblebee Jam? What was the ease of development? Um, and is the Bose SDK now closed? So we used Unity and we used Bose SDK. Uh, Bose SDK is not closed. It's just closed for public. Uh, so they just changed their policy. Uh, they, it's still possible to develop for it, but they are now, uh, in my understanding, they are now uh, selectively choose the partners. I see. Um, so that was a great uh, explanation of how you had to simplify the UI and you know everything you learned from this process. Uh, what's next for uh, Synesthetic Echo Studios? Uh, so we are working on various projects. Uh, we're always uh, on the look for like some exciting new technologies, working with haptics and VR. But we are currently developing our own VR fitness platform. Very cool. Um, let's see. Last question here is, can you please report the name of the devices that this paradigm works with? Uh, Unreal glasses, Focus by North, uh, Amazon Echo Frames, Magic Leap, HoloLens. It can even work for VR for some 
you know, situations. So like anything that's so, immersive. So I guess if you could have anything in a future device, you know, what would you want it to have? For the future device, for what? I'm sorry. For for audio and like you know games like this. Oh, uh, ideally, you know, it would have at least some visual feedback on glasses because both frames have only feedback on the phone and would be very affordable. You know, under like two hundred maybe. That's why both frames are so great because they are mm -hmm. like cheap. Or yeah, no, cheap. that was. I think the the key would be you know different types of input. So like you said, if there was some sort of visual feedback directly, that would be great. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much for being here for the Q&A, Maria. Thank you. All right.